Good morning, Chem 20s. Our lesson today is going to be on gas stoichiometry, the third and final type of stoichiometry we will look at in Chemistry 20. The process for stoichiometry applies to all chemical reactions, including gases. For gas stoichiometry, this will involve gas volumes, pressures, temperatures, and the ideal gas constant. If the conditions are at STP or SATP, then molar volumes may also be involved. You will notice the two formulas. One would be the ideal gas law, moved around to solve for moles, and the other would be the molar volume formula, solved, moved around again to solve for moles. When doing stoichiometry, no matter which type, there are still the four same assumptions. First, reactions are spontaneous. Second, reactions are fast. Third, reactions are quantitative. And lastly, reactions are stoichiometric. We will be following the same five-step method for gas stoich as we did the previous two other types. Again, step three, we will be find using the information we have in order to convert to moles. And again, in the last step, we'll be using the information provided in order to choose a formula to answer the appropriate question. So let's try example number one. When sodium metal is added to water, a violent reaction occurs. What mass of sodium is needed to produce 20 liters of the explosive gas at STP? Why don't you pause your video right now and do as many steps of the five-step method as you are able to do in order to try to solve this problem. When you get stuck or you would like to check over your work, please unpause the video and watch my process. Now I'm gonna need a pen. Wonderful. So when I take a look at this question, it says we are going to mix sodium metal, so that's going to be sodium solid, with water. Now this would be a single replacement reaction, and we know the trick to a single replacement reaction is when you have water, write water as HOH. So sodium and hydrogen are both the cations. They're going to exchange places, so hydrogen is going to go off by itself. And sodium, which is a one positive charge, is going to join with hydroxide, which is a one negative charge. We will look it up in our solubility table because the water references um, the fact that we will go to the solubility table and we'll notice that it's aqueous. So we have two baby H's, two baby H's. Now I have two hydroxides, two hydroxides, two sodiums two sodiums. So you get one mark, again, for your balanced chemical equation. Next, we're going to do is we're going to write our knowns and unknowns underneath the appropriate categories. So we are trying to figure out what mass of sodium. The moment we know we're finding mass, we can look up the molar mass, which is 22.99 grams per mole. And we're going to produce 20 liters of this gas. And our gas, of course, would be hydrogen gas. Um, so that's going to be our volume. And it says STP, so I can take those conditions out of my data booklet. My pressure is 101.325 kilopascals. And my temperature is 273.15 kelvins. So my first step is to find the moles of my known. So that's going to be finding the moles of hydrogen gas. So this will be the formula PV equals NRT. So when I move this formula around, PV equals NRT, the RT is going to go to the bottom. And again, if you have to go off to the side and do the formula moving so that you can see it, please go right ahead. My pressure, 101.325 kilopascals times a volume of 20 liters divided by 8.314 kilopascals dot liters over moles dot kelvins. And my temperature is 273.15 kelvins. So I'm going to type in 101.325 times 20. 
divided by 8.314, enter, divided by 273.15, enter, and I am allowed three sig digs, says the original question. So my answer is 0 0.892 moles. So I get one mark for calculating moles. I'm now going to find the mole ratio. So to find the moles of sodium, take the number we already have, the full calculator number. We're going to times by unknown over known. So my unknown is 2. My known is 1. So times 2 moles over 1 mole. And I'm going to get 1.78 moles. My last step is to find the mass of sodium, and that's going to be moles times molar mass. So I'm going to take 1.78 moles, and I'm going to multiply by 22.99 grams per mole. And my full calculator number is going to be 41.0 grams. So I've done my mole ratio step. I've converted to the mass. Again, when we go to give marks, this is out of five. Balanced chemical reaction. Answer the moles. Do the mole ratio. Get moles again. Get your final answer in mass. When you're finished, three, three, three sig digs. Units are everywhere. You're allowed one state wrong. You can have the fifth mark. Now, this question is interesting because you could do it this way, but you don't have to do it this way. And so I'm going to change pen colors here for a second. And I think I'm going to try doing this question again. Now, the th interesting thing about this question is when we came and we did the volume, because the volume was at STP, we didn't actually have to use pressure and temperature and use the ideal gas law. Because we had a volume, and again, I'm going to come in, I'm going to do it over here. Because my volume is 20.0 liters, I actually have a molar volume at STP of 22.4 liters per mole which means when I do the first step and I find the moles of H2, I can use the formula volume over molar volume and do 20.0 liters over 22.4 liters per mole and do the question this way. So 20.0 divided by 22.4, we would get 0 0.8. 93 moles. Now, the number is extremely close. We're off by the thousandth of a mole. But again, that's kind of a rounding error based on, on this example, on ideal gas, we're using this constant. In molar volume, we're going to be using this constant. They are still going to be very close together. Again, to find my moles of sodium, I'm going to take my number. I'm going to multiply by 2 moles over 1 mole. And my number is going to be extremely close again, 1.79. It rounds up again a little bit extra this time. And then last but not least, I'm going to take this number and I'm going to multiply it by 22.99. And my answer this time is going to be 41.1. Oh, excuse me, 41.1 grams. So again, extremely, extremely close. I will mark it the same either way. All I do is I look to see, are you doing molar volume? Are you doing ideal, ideal gas constants? And I mark it accordingly. It still would be out of five marks. Okay, one question left here. So I'm going to go back to my original pen color. We are going to do example number two. On this question, I would like you to copy it, stop, go do the whole thing, and then compare your work with me. Again, I don't care if you do ideal gas constant or molar volume. Just remember that you can only do molar volume if the question is at STP or SATP. Otherwise, you have to do ideal gas constant. So we have methane. 
and we are burning it in oxygen. So when I burn carbon, I make CO2. When I burn hydrogen, I make H2O vapor. Now we need to balance this. So we have one carbon, one carbon, two oxygen. We already have three oxygen. So we have an, sorry, we don't do oxygen next. We have one carbon, one carbon, four hydrogen. We need four hydrogen. Two oxygen plus two oxygen is four oxygen. Four oxygen. Got to follow the steps properly. Um, a 1.22 liter methane cylinder. So that is my volume. At 15 degrees Celsius, so my temperature is 15. So I have to add 273.15. That's going to take me to 288.15. And my pressure is 328.0 kilopascals. What volume of oxygen? at SATP, so I know the temperature at SATP, it is 298.15 kelvins, and I know the pressure at SATP because it's 100 kilopascals. Now, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more paper. So, where do I know enough information I can solve for moles? What's well, gonna be right here. So, we have done the balanced equation, we have done the unknowns and knowns, we are going to find moles of CH4. So again, it's PV equals NRT. So the RT is going to come down. So take 328.0 kilopascals times 1.22 liters divided by 8.314 kPa dot L over moles dot kelvins. And we're also going to divide it by 288.15 kelvins. So 328 times 1.22, enter, divided by 3 point, sorry, divided by 8.314, divided by 288.15. And I am allowed three sig figs as the question. So my answer is 0 0.167 moles. 0 0.167 moles. I'm now going to find the moles of O2. So I'm going to do the mole ratio step. I'm going to multiply by my unknown 2 divided by my known 1. So take my full calculator number times by 2 moles. Divide by one mole. And my answer is 0 0.334 moles. My last step is to find the volume of O2. So the formula is PV equals NRT. So my P would come down. So take my full calculator number. Multiply it by 8.314 kPa dot L over moles dot Kelvin times my temperature was 298.15 Kelvin. And I'm going to divide the whole thing by 100 kilopascals. So full calculator number times 8.314 times 298.15, enter, divided by 100. And my answer in three sig figs is going to be 8.28 liters. Three, three, three sig figs, units everywhere, one state, I would still get my mark out of five. Now, this question, like the previous one, it was possible for us to do the question differently. Again, the first step is going to be the same because this is not at ST or SATP conditions. So this number is the same. My second step is still going to be two moles over one mole. It's the last math step here 
where if we wanted to down here on the last step, we could do to find the volume of oxygen, because this volume is at SATP, we could do moles times molar volume. So we could take, and remember, it's got to be our full calculator value. So although I'm writing down 0.334 moles, it's the full calculator value that matters to us. And we could multiply it by 24.8 liters per mole. When I have the full calculator value, we actually end up in this example getting the exact same number again. Again, it would be out of five. I would follow your work. Again, it's a lot of your organizational step here, which tells me the way I'm going to look at your work on how did you decide to approach this problem. 